I thought I'd show you what a melting point looks like. I have a Digimelt and I set the initial temperature to 116 degrees. I have a sample of benzoic acid and benzoic acid melts at 122 degrees. If this had been a, uh, a product of an experiment, I probably would have started about 10 to 15 degrees below the melting point because you never know with the impurities uh, how much the melting point is going to be below the actual melting point usually. Uh, but with a pure sample, you can start pretty close. So this is a benzoic acid sample. I'll stick that in there. And you can see it, it's pretty clear. And uh, I may be doing some adjusting of the lighting uh, as we do this. Um, but what we're gonna be looking for is we're gonna be looking for when it starts to melt. That's known as the sweat or the sweating point. And then when it's completely melted, and that's the clear point. And those two numbers designate the range of our melting point. So I'm gonna start the heating. We're at 115.9 and I'll call out temperatures. I'll even zoom in a little bit maybe. We can see a little more clearly what the sample is looking like. And we're kind of at the resolution of this camera. Uh, we're at 116.3. should take two or three minutes at this rate to get uh, to see everything that we need to see back out just a little bit one seventeen point three With pure samples, the melting point range is usually one or two degrees around the melting point. Uh, for impure samples, uh, it's usually below the melting point and the range between the sweat and the melt uh, is typically pretty large. What you're actually seeing is a freezing point depression uh, that we talk about in Chem 1A. And if you have an impurity mixed in your solid, then the melting point goes down. So we're at 118 and a half. One nineteen. One twenty. Uh, you might be noticing the sample getting a little bit smaller, uh, but you don't see any liquid form. It's getting smaller sometimes. This happens a lot at these higher temperatures because the sample begins to sublime. And just notice there's there's a little bit bead of liquid. So this is one twenty point five. On the left hand side, you can start seeing beads of liquid. I'm not sure you would see that. Um, without being magnified like this. And now it's starting everywhere. So 121.1. 121.1. .1. This is 121.6. We're at 122, and what we're looking for is the clear point when the entire sample melts. It's a little hard to see in this view, actually. Yeah, I would say, I would probably call that about 122.7. Um, sometimes what you see when you have a little bit too much sample in there is actually you're seeing the thermal mass of the sample. That is, you have a lot of material in there, 123.1, um, and it just takes more time for that 
to melt. And so sometimes you have to be a little bit careful. So what, about 121-ish uh, to 122 and a half, 123, somewhere in that range. And now when we're done, what you have to do is you have to hit stop and it'll cool. And once it cools below the melting point, uh, you can run a second sample and that second sample, you can change the ramp rate to be slower. And then some of that thermal mass problem goes away because if you heat the sample more slowly, uh, it gives more time for the sample to come to an equilibrium temperature.